Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. Cut me. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the morning show here on Main Street TV. We just have so much fun here, don't we? We always do. That's right. Always. We do. And if you could see behind the scenes. I know. We should do a show before the show. Yeah, that, that would be that it, would be a hit for sure. It would be like the inappropriate show. That, that's right. We'd have before to get, the appropriate ha, the show. The censors would be out. Yeah, something right. like that, yes. Right. But uh, no, welcome. And of course, our friend Pete Wilson is here with the morning news update. And that's always brought to you by Nia Henry. And she's an agent for Appalachia Realty. And uh, if you need any real estate, anything, give her a call. 418-4135. And she'll work hard for you. Okay, Pete. Right off the rip. This is breaking news. Yes. Did you or did you not know? James and I have been having this discussion for 10 minutes. Okay. Did you or did you not know that there is such a thing as a waterless urinal? No, I did not know. Well, they exist. You don't flush them. Okay. My mind is absolutely blown. Okay. Okay. I'm not surprised. I'm sure it's another save the earth thing. So Jamie and I were at a place yesterday and he said, I know you don't know this because you wouldn't have any reason to know <laughs> no, this. I would hope you wouldn't know it. But did you know? And I said, no, I had, that's just like <laughs> mind blowing to me. So I made him literally get up from the table and go back into the bathroom and take a picture so that I could see it because I didn't believe it. It's okay. a thing. Okay, you saw this at a at a restaurant or something. At Jackie O's. At Jackie in O's. Athens. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So coming soon to Six Sense Brewing, remodeling. I think there'll be flushless urinals just because they're cool. Okay. All right. I wonder what the price tag on those are. I don't know, but I googled it, mm -hmm. and they save <clears throat> a typical current urinal takes a gallon of water to flush mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. So for 7,000 flushes, it takes 7,000 gallons of water mm -hmm. to flush the urinal. 670 bucks. See? 670 bucks. That's the one I found, too. Is that at Lowe's or something? He's looking. So anyway. You, know, you can factor that in and, and decide from a business standpoint whether that's a good decision. It may be. Well, correct. So it's good for the environment. Uh, as, it's aside good from for... the environmental and sure. vi environmental angle. But so James found one for 670 bucks. A, a normal urinal is about 250 So, I mean, really, I would think it would pay for itself pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, so these only take, you know, a couple of gallons per 3,000 or 7,000 flushes. So there you go. Okay. Now you know. You know, that would really be, aside from the environmental, that would really be a big thing in the many places we take for granted our water supply here. Correct. Uh, in many places, particularly in the West, that would be a, that would be a big issue. It that would be. That would be a big thing, saving water. Absolutely. You know, because, just, from a, just from a practical standpoint. You're right. And um, what, whatever, you know, whichever facet of your life you're you're trying to, to save, whether it be money or environmental, saving water, whatever, I mean... It's just kind of good all around. Right. Okay. So there you go. Now you know. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, very good. <laughs> you know, Breaking I, news. I, I, I had, right here. I had a stack here, but I will admit <laughs> that I didn't know we were going to start off with a urinal discussion. Now you know. Okay. Okay. Now let's that, get to right. the real Where news. Where else but on Main Street <laughs> TV, right? Yes. Okay. I, I like these topics, these off topics, you know, they get us going. 
uphill, downhill, whatever? All around. Okay. See, I just got to get you outside of your box okay. for a minute, Pete. <laughs> All right. Well, how about this? How is this for range and variety from murals to homecoming queens? Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's how we're going to start out because I wanted to start out with something positive. Okay. All right. It was homecoming weekend at Jackson High School and at Wellston High yes. School. Yes. And so uh, at Jackson High School, there you have the moment, the very moment, thanks to Seth Fain photography, when uh, Kendall Osborne, senior at Jackson High School, cheerleader on the track team and all, uh, very popular, of course, you'd have to be if you're elected sure. homecoming queen by your peers. There she is getting crowned, big smile. That is Jackson High School principal Tyler Swackhammer uh, putting the crown on her head. That was before the game of the Jackson Hillsborough game on Friday evening at Alumni Stadium. Another big crowd there, good yes. weather and all. And uh, of course, uh, whereas Kendall was crowned the queen, there was other homecoming royalty as well. We'll mention their names. The other senior attendants were Jade Winters, Jenna Lewis, and Alex Batista. And, you know, not only are these girls pretty, if I'm allowed to say that. Sure. But in addition to that, they're popular because it is a student vote. So it is a great it honor. Is. It you is. You have a great to be honor. beautiful um, on the inside, too. Yeah, yeah right? that, that too. That too. The underclassmen attendants were uh, juniors Trinity Erickson. Uh, sophomore attendant was uh, Ella Armstrong, and the freshman attendant was J.C. Yeager. They had a homecoming dance on Saturday night. Uh, I think we told you initially they had planned to have it in the parking lot. They, they changed did. their mind. The reason was they saw the forecast. Yes. <laughs> and that was a couple of days ahead of time that they made that decision, and it got a little nippy yeah. anyway. Oh, cool. So uh, one golden night was the theme, and so you know we will have uh, certainly some uh, pictures uh, in the print edition on um, – Wednesday. And right now, if you go to that new website, uh, the new old website, the telegramnews.com, you can see a picture of Kendall Osborne. There you go. It's out there. All right. At Wellston High School, just about at the same time, <laughs> uh, a homecoming queen was crowned there as well. Senior Jasmine Moeller yes. is uh, the Wellston High School homecoming queen through 2022. There she is. Uh, she is a cheerleader and also very active in school, also, also very popular, of course. She is flanked. That is a posed picture. Uh, Todd Compton took that on our Telegram staff. And Jasmine is flanked by her parents, Kevin Moeller and Mika Moeller. Mika, of course, a lot of us know. Uh, <laughs> of Michael's she, fame. She's the bubble queen. <laughs> she's the she's bubble, bubble queen. <laughs> right, right, down, right here in downtown Jackson. And so uh, congratulations to Kendall Osborne and to Jasmine Moeller. I wonder if Jasmine has made a bubble in her life. I know that she works there. <laughs> I and I think she... sometimes the Moeller sisters are behind the counter yes. there. So and they've got some experience there too. But uh, uh, other attendants there uh, for, uh, for Wellston, the other senior attendants were Shayla Rice and Madeline Weber. The junior attendant was Kimmy Aubrey. The sophomore attendant was Elon Walters. And the freshman attendant was Madeline Childers. There was also a homecoming king. Now, he wasn't there uh, to be crowned for the festivities there pregame for the football game at C.H. Jones Field. But uh, during the battle of the classes, Xavier Miller, a senior, was crowned as the okay. homecoming king at Wellston High School. And they also, Wellston, had their dance on Saturday evening, and that was uh, inside Wellston High School. All right. This week, it's homecoming week at Oak Hill High School. Uh -huh. And uh, Oak another. Hill High School has already named uh, their, uh, royalty, uh, their royalty members who are candidates for Queen and the underclassmen attendants. And there they are sitting all together. This picture also on our website as well. It will be in our print edition on Wednesday. Right there in the front row are the three seniors, one of whom will be crowned Queen this Friday night when the Oaks are home. Uh, for their next football game, uh, those uh, senior queen candidates from the left, the front row, are Abby Donnelly, Jordan Howard, and Abby Hanning. And yes, Abby Donnelly was the 2022 <laughs> Apple Jackson queen. Apple yes. Festival queen. Would that be a great two for? That would be a good two for, yes. But of course, uh, we will see what happens there. Uh, the senior king candidates that are right behind the queen candidates in the second row in the middle. Gavin Howell, Reagan Michael, and A.J. Harrison. Flanking the senior king candidates are the two junior attendants. On the left is Hayden Reif, 
And on the right is Emma Davis. And yes, that is Emma Davis, who was the uh, second, att uh, who was the uh, second attendant for the Jackson Apple Festival when she was on Abby's court. So uh, it, 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 a great two How weeks funny. to both Abby yeah. and Emma. Uh, also on the back row uh, from the left, you have underclassmen attendants, freshman attendant Maddie Donnelly. I don't know whether that is uh, Abby's sister or cousin or whatever, Maddie Donnelly. Sophomore attendants Brinley Harden and Reagan Atkins there in the middle. And on the far right in the back row is freshman attendant Grace Lundy. The football game is October 7th. Uh, and the queen will be announced and crowned at that time. Uh, it will be before the game, we, we understand. The dance will be on Saturday night at the high school from 6 to 8 p.m. So uh, Vinton County had their homecoming a couple weeks ago, uh, Jackson and Wellston this last Friday, and Oak Hill coming up this weekend. So those are that's your homecoming news right there. All right, the big news also for the James A. Rhodes Airport. Now, they have been fortunate yes. out there to uh, get some infrastructure money through the different programs that are coming, where the money is coming in from Washington. Uh, and Columbus has been, uh, state government has been very supportive of well with some money as well. But the latest good news is that for BWXT, that is the cleanup contractor down at the uh, old Pike County Uranium Enrichment site. Mm -hmm. uh, they obviously do a lot of good in the area. They truly do. They donate a lot of money back into the community. And one of those donations went to the James A. Rhodes Airport, 50 grand, $50,000. Nice. That is the check presentation, which took, which took place recently. Uh, we had airport authority members out there. Uh, you had county commissioners out there. Uh, you had economic development folks out there. Obviously, you had floor BWXT representatives as well. And that fifty thousand uh, dollars, this is this is that's just kind of like the sidebar story to the announcement that they're going to build new hangars at the mm -hmm. James A. Rhodes Airport. Big deal through expansion. Yeah, uh, they had that new terminal built just a couple years ago. But what they lacked was really hangar space. You know, if there are more people are going to use the airport as a as as a base, uh -huh. and now they will be able to house after that hangar is built, the new hangar building. It will be a standalone building. I understand there'll be at least ten planes that will be able to be there. There'll be restroom facilities as well. They may be waterless urinals. We'll yes. find that out later. I, I'm going to I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> But, but, but that's Look out, right. commissioners. Lobby. I'll be at the meeting tomorrow. Well, you, you've got time to do that on the side. Uh, but anyway, uh, according to James A. Rhodes Airport Manager Gerald Burchett, there were 21 based aircraft at the airport as of September 21st. You may be surprised. 20, 21. 21 people wow. keep their air, airplanes there. And, and, you know, if you get this idea, well, you know, this is for folks that are able to afford their own plane. It's recreation. Yeah, it's part of that. But more importantly... People fly in and out of there who, uh, for business reasons. Yes. Including uh, Belicio Foods, General Mills, Speyside Bourbon Cooperage, Walmart, and Dollar General. Yes. They're corporate people. They don't want to fly into Columbus and have to rent a car and drive no. down here. They want to fly in close. And believe it or not, you know, this may blow your mind, but it's the truth. I've heard this constantly from economic development people. If you don't have an airport close by, that may affect their decision on whether to Absolutely. Uh, expand, uh, keep their business there, put a new business there, a new yep. plan there. That is one of the factors behind the scenes. And so anytime that there's good news or progress for the James A. Rhodes Airport, it's progress for everybody from an economic development standpoint. Heck yeah. All right. At the, at the last meeting of the Jackson City Board of Education, Superintendent Phil Howard had uh, a couple of announcements to make, observations that are worth mentioning. These are things that are behind the scenes a little bit, but they're pretty important. Did you know, Jennifer, it started last year during basketball season. It might have had something to do with COVID, but I'm not really sure about that. But I think there was an element of this. But were you aware that they started to have students admitted free of charge? Yes. This I, is a big thing from a business thing. I mean, big deal. Right. Because, I mean, th these are customers. You're giving them a cut rate to get in because they're mm -hmm. students and kids. You want to make it affordable, but this is an important part of your business plan, and schools are businesses. They decided that they were going to let students in free at Jackson. It was kind of experimental. They did get some community support and sponsorship to, to uh, cover at least part of the cost. I'm not sure whether it covers all of it, but part of it. And they have decided to continue that this year. 
That's why there's been a good student attendance at basketball games last year, last school year, and at football games this school year. And uh, Phil Howard um, addressed that. They are going to continue with that. They're going to continue to uh, to seek community sponsorships to cover these costs. But then, you know, kind of a secondary thing is they feel, you know, concession sales and like that, that kind of helps make up for sure. it a little bit too. Because, you know, the kids go to the concession stand and that helps the support groups that, that sell there. That's the band boosters. That's the mothers, football mothers club. Um, and in basketball, they have their own support clubs as well. So, well, I think that it's very uh, um, good that they're doing this because no kids should not be able to go support their peers because they can't afford it. No, or, no, you that, know, that, that's that, not cool. That's another thing. They they want to support the sports team. They that, need that, to be there thing. for their friends and, you but, know. But for the kid, but for the kid, think of how many kids, what high percentage of families uh, qualify for reduced or, or free sure. meals uh, in our county. Yep. And so you think that they're going to hand the kid five dollars to go to every basketball game and football game right probably i mean it gets, not. it gets expensive probably not yeah and you know if, if a child has a you know limited amount of spending money available to him or her they may make a decision i can't i can't afford to do that so yeah. i think it's a good if they you know if it doesn't hurt too much on the business end because that those costs go on it's a great idea and i'm not sure how many other schools do it i don't think jackson's the only one but they are going to continue Love that. to do that also, uh, you remember Adena Regional Medical Center, or Adena Health System, rather, started a clinic at Jackson Middle School called the Iron Man Clinic. Yes. And this is open not just to students and staff members. This is open to the public as well. The public can go there when it's open during school hours. They are building a new Iron Man Clinic. Uh, instead of it being in the regular middle school building, they're building a new place uh, by the middle school, uh, they had really? hoped, yes, they had hoped that that pro they got three hundred thousand dollars in state grant funding to, wow. to do this, and they're going to convert one of those buildings that's across Trego Avenue, yeah. where you know where the old ag place used to be, yeah. uh, and the old Center for Student Achievement. You remember that? Some people may know where that is, but uh, it's kind of like uh, on the uh, it would be the it would be the west side of, of the middle school building. Trego comes down uh, into that dead end spot where you go into the gymnasium yes, there. Yes. On the other side of the street there is where this is going to be. They had hoped to actually already be started with construction on that, but they've hit some snags. But now they say that um, that, that project will start and that it should be completed by next March. And this will be a conversion of existing facilities. $300,000 state grant will help pay for that. It will be a better and bigger Ironman Great. Clinic. I was actually at the middle school when they started the Ironman Clinic, and it was like a really cool thing, actually. So okay. Dylan, where the nurse's uh, office used to be and stuff. Well, that is great. That's really cool. And how how um, is that utilized? I mean, has it helped you out? Uh, I never really went there, but I do know that the band like really encourages you to go there for your physical, so you can participate in band. It makes it okay. so much more convenient. Yeah, so convenient. You know, there are school nurses, but, you know, it's it's one person in a building or maybe there's a, a person that moves around. Yeah. So you got that many people together, you know, there's going to be a need for medical service beyond someone I, putting a Band-Aid on you. Yeah, I didn't know that it was open to the public as well. It is. It is. I did not know that. You know, you have to make a, I think cool. you have to make an appointment and all like that. Uh, but this is another this is another availability for medical services. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, we've got different clinics. We've got, you know, Holzer Medical Center, Jackson Hospital sure. out there. We've got an ER. We've got urgent care. But it can be hard to get in sometimes. sometimes especially yes. for more routine things. Yep. You know, you're sick. You need help. You don't want to be told to come back in two weeks. So, Correct. So anytime that there's an expansion or improvement of medical facilities and services, that's good. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. like actually on Google. Uh, Adina Family Medicine Ironman Clinic. And you can even call the number and everything. Okay. Cool. Well, there, Thanks, you, there, there you go. That's probably kind of something that even though it's been reported on, uh, and I do remember that, that's why I said it, probably a lot of people who know that there is an Ironman clinic probably just assume. Just that, for the kids. Right. Or, yeah. It's, yeah, it's I didn't an internal know that. thing. It's an, and that's the main reason for it. But uh, it's also <laughs> available to the public, too. You know, I'm not sure whether you have to be on the Adena rolls, you know, because, you know, you have patients that are registered. Sure. And I'm not sure about that process. But uh, but anyway, it is available to more than just students and staff. 
All right, uh, incident uh, that happened uh, in the Oak Hill schools that became an issue at the last school board meeting. Okay. Uh, and we had this in our paper Saturday. It was uh, Jeremiah Shaver wrote the story up from covering this last school board meeting. We have it online as well. Uh, but there was a parent, Kelly Butler, who was very concerned with how a medical emergency was handled that affected her daughter. Okay. Uh, this is Kelly Butler speaking at that Oak Hill School Board meeting. She was a very emotional and concerned. And uh, at the school board meeting, she said that her daughter, who plays on the volleyball team, has an asthma condition. And she had a, a full, what she described as a full-blown asthma attack oh. during a practice. She was very concerned. First of all, there was not a trainer there, which sometimes that's going to happen. The trainer can't be everywhere. But right. in this case, the trainer, I think there's some shared services with Wellston or there was some ball game in Wellston. The trainer was not there, but that's going to happen sometimes. Yes. That's no fault of the district. But she complained that uh, a student assisted her daughter uh, rather than the coaches uh, or an adult. And she was also concerned that somebody gave her daughter somebody else's inhaler, which I guess you shouldn't do. Oh. Didn't give okay. her her own inhaler. I don't know whether she had an inhaler there or not. That wasn't sure. really covered in Kelly Butler's remarks. But the next day, she brought up this issue with the, and then the way it worked out, her daughter had to go to the ER and receive some breathing treatments there yes. for, and was there for about an hour, I guess. But the next day, she supposedly took her concerns to the uh, to the uh, athletic director and uh, a building principal, and uh, she was unhappy with the response that she got or the lack of response she got. Okay. I think, you know, somebody talked to her, but she felt like nobody was going to do anything or whatever, so she came to the school board meeting and aired this publicly in front and of her. That's what they're there for, in front right? Of, in front of everybody. Now... There wasn't a lot of uh, comments back from the school board members or the superintendent, uh, Brian Mantell, or Jason Mantell. Yes. Um, I'm not sure. You well, know, I whether, call him Josh, so it's fine. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, right. I'm not sure. Mandel. Mandel. I, I'm not sure whether they were talking. Uh, I'm not sure whether they were hearing it for the first time, but they took it under advisement. And sure. uh, board president Aaron Michael said that they would take her comments and, uh, you know, uh, under advisement and decide if anything needed to be done. And if it is, it may be internal, you yeah. know, on process or whatever. Right. And once again, this was just, you know, a mother's testimony on what her daughter had gone through. And she was uh, concerned about how it unfolded, about the response, and felt like she needed to make it public. And also she hopes that what happened with her will lead to uh, maybe some changes so that something like this would not happen again. Okay. All right. Yeah. Makes so sense. Uh, then there's an issue at the Wellston City Schools that we followed up on. And there really is no new news, but we wanted, I know that it created, you know, a lot of interest when it was first reported. And that was the Wellston uh, high school teacher who was uh, suspended uh, after an alleged violation of Title IX. The details mm -hmm. of what that is, we don't know. Can you tell me what Title IX is? Because I heard your news story, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, well, Title IX has to do with discrimination, sex discrimination. Uh, Title IX was in the news uh, like 20, 30 years ago when there wasn't female sports, and female sports had to be treated equally, equal opportunity and all like that. Uh, okay. You know, if there's this for the boys, there should be this for the girls. I mean, that's gotcha. a simplistic explanation of it but it's about discrimination on the sexual side the title nine is okay and so there was some alleged violation of title nine involving this teacher i don't know whether it was functioning as a teacher or coach or whatever and once sure. again the teacher was not identified but there was a lot of talk about a teacher being arrested let out of the building that was all false according to superintendent dr brian rao yeah. however because of the title nine process it's all written down what you do while it's being investigated, because this is a federal thing, this becomes a federal thing, oh. the teacher has been suspended uh, uh, temporarily until, you know, an investigation is complete, and then they will go from there, the local officials, maybe the federal officials as well. Once again, I'm not sure what the violation, I don't know what the violation is, yeah. I'm not even going to speculate on that, but once again... Title IX has to do with discrimination. Okay. That's a big deal. Right. So... 
Uh, Sounds like. We followed up. That's been a couple weeks since that first broke. We followed up with Dr. Brian Rao, who has been very good to work with as far as being uh, communicative with us. And there wasn't a whole lot he could say other than they're still waiting for the completion of the investigation and the report that will be handed to them, and then they will go from there. Okay. So that teacher remains suspended, and the investigation is going on. All right, in the city of, of Jackson, we're talking along the main drag on East Main Street. <laughs> now, before we could say the number one sign was now hiring, all yes. right, along the street. Now it's bump. Oh, my gosh. It's bump. Uh, pretty bad out there. They have milled, it's rough. They've milled almost the length Literally. of East Main Street where, yes. you know, there's going to be paving. I understand unofficially, this has not been put out by ODOT or the city, but um, unofficially, we have been told that actual paving could start today. That's where, you know, they put down the, the, the black, <laughs> that's where they put down the black top or the asphalt, the concrete, whatever yeah. they're using, I'm not sure. Uh, and then once they do that, they have to stripe. So it's going to take a little while longer. Remember, Mayor Randy Evans told us that he thinks it will probably be done by October from a practical standpoint, yeah. even though officially it'll be completed by the end of fall 2022. There and you we, go. And we know, you know what that is. That's <laughs> December 20th, I think. So it'll be it'll it'll be before that. But today, uh, I mean, be aware of the uh, orange uh, barrels out there. You can't park downtown either on Broadway Street or Main Street. You know. Some some of the merchants, at least one of the merchants, complained about the parking deal, and they got a temporary reprieve, and they allowed parking on East Main Street on Thursday and Friday. I, I okay. didn't know that when I was on, on okay. the TV the last time, because officially there was supposed to be no parking downtown, right? and they were directing people to the city lot right off Portsmouth Street. Yep. But now it looks like they're going to be working and paving for sure, and I noticed that those barrels were up on Broadway Street yesterday, okay. too in that block from, or in those several blocks, the main street all the way through town down to South street. You know, you're not going to be able to park along there. That is state so route 139. You just have to, in your mind, like when you get in your car to drive somewhere, like plan an alternate route. Right. And you know, if they're it's not, not hard, you just got to think about it. And you got to be really careful in a construction zone, even if they're not on a certain section, They've got those bumps in there. Now, have you noticed that? Uh, yeah. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are great speed bumps. I, I will say, say there's that. There's nobody you're, speeding down Main you know, Street if you go, right now. If you get up to 20 miles an hour and you hit one of those things, and then, and then you see other motors, which are, you know, doing the dodgeball routine. Yes. It's, going it's around rough. Them. Right. And then you have Literally, to be careful about yes. moving into somebody else's lane to miss one of those things. But just <laughs> just slow down. Yeah. And, just, or seek an alternative route. And when they, like if they fine. do start the paving today... Uh, you know, really, I mean, they've had some restrictions, but when you have the paving, you're certainly going to have lane restrictions. Yes. They're going to, on Main Street, they move, may move you from the right lane to the center lane if you're going one direction and vice versa. Yep. So you're going to start to run into that. So, you know, be careful when you're turning on the Main Street about what right. lane you're in. Pay attention. And, you know, the police have been out there and they've been kind of trying to direct people where to go and things. So just slow down. Right. Don't you, get mad. Just right. And, and chill. If, and if all that isn't enough, today is the day that some of the flashing red lights may <laughs> may be turned off. Hey, I'm glad about that. So I hopefully won't right, sit right. at them I, anymore. I, I, I don't know whether I think there's eight intersections that's involved. I don't. And, and all of them are near the downtown area, not far from the downtown area. I'm not sure it's going to all the lights are going to go off at once today or it's going to be, a, you know, a. a kind of like a gradual thing. I'm not sure, but it, it is supposed to start today. What that means is there might be a traffic light hanging up there, but it's not going to be turned on and you're going to see four way. You're going to be stop signs each way. And that's something new that you have to adjust to, even though they told you that it's coming at the four way stops. Yes. You got to stop. And if there's nobody coming the other way and you're there first, then you proceed ahead. All right. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's what you do. So be looking for that's that. Right. And I noticed a, a new, a new, uh, a new situation, whether it's temporary or not at Portsmouth and Maine. Did you see that? They've got a flashing yellow light. No, I didn't notice that. It was there this weekend, but that's something new to kind of cognitively think about before, you know, you stop or you move ahead. But this is what that means to me. It's flashing yellow on Main Street. It's flashing red on Portsmouth. You don't have to stop, but you better slow down. Yeah. When you're going, I, you know, I don't think you'd be arrested if you stop, but a yellow light means caution. 
the red, the flashing red light means stop. I wonder if that's permanent. I don't know whether that's a, a, a new plan there or, or what, or, or they've thought about it and they think that's the best way to manage that intersection. But that's the way it was yesterday. Maybe it has something to do with the construction. So is the, the main street the yellow light? The main street is the yellow light. Now, that's the only one I saw where it's flashing yellow instead of flashing red. Interesting. And Ooh. it wasn't that way until the last day or so. Yeah, I don't know. And it may not be, be there now, but I'm just telling you what I saw when I was there. Gotcha. All I right. hate, I don't like that light anyway, because you just sit there for no reason. It's one of those where you sit there for no reason, I feel like. Exactly. And it takes forever right. to change. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I tell you what, Mayor Evans at the last council meeting made a statement and uh, Mayor Randy Heath, when he was mayor, was was very good about doing this. And it's something that we all know or should know, but it was good that he brought it up publicly. We did write a story about it. He wanted to salute the Apple Festival Committee and Jaffe for, for what they did. Yes. Because in case you don't know, even though the Apple Festival kind of kind of a big business, I mean, you can see how uh, many yeah. people are here, all that's involved in it, all the activities. Those guys are all volunteers they're volunteers they don't yes. get paid a damn no. thing and a lot of them the main guys take vacation for a whole week yes so that's a big so it's costing them money potentially on top of you know all the hard work right and so that's a yeah. big sacrifice so the mayor gave them a shout out at the last council meeting and he also of course praised them for the festival of course uh, it did run pretty smoothly. They had very big crowds, especially on Saturday. The weather was pretty good. That part you never can control. That's right. Uh, but uh, Ian did not make it up here until uh, until Saturday. Yes. So that was until Saturday. So that was good for for the festival. Yes, it was. All right. Uh, so a couple other things. Uh, City of Wellston. Uh, they have a council meeting coming up this Thursday. But before the council meeting, they're going to have a planning committee meeting, and the public is welcome to come. Uh, the planning committee is going to meet at 6 p.m. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 6.30 p.m. at the Wellston City Building. That is a half hour before the regular council meeting. And it's, they're going to discuss food trucks and potentially establishing a food truck lot within the Wellston city limits. So that's interesting. Okay. That issue came up in Jackson about a year ago because there were more and more food trucks mm -hmm. and trailers that were parked here and there. Regulation, do you charge them anything? All like that. And uh, so they're talking about that in Wellston. If you want to weigh in on that discussion, because I don't think they've made any decisions, is at the committee level now where they want to discuss, this is your opportunity to do it in kind of an informal discussion, even though it is an open public meeting. Okay. Uh, the full council meeting will be right after that at uh, 7 p.m. there at the Wellston City Building, uh, the corner of Pennsylvania Avenue and Broadway. Cool. All right. Uh, we're going to turn our focus now on Vinton County. And uh, if you've driven through Hamden, which you, uh, even if you don't stop at Hamden, you drive through it on the sure. way to MacArthur and points north and uh, points south if you're heading from, uh, if you're heading from, uh, from MacArthur towards Jackson. Um, but this shot is just outside, uh, it's not in Hamden, this shot is just outside Vinton County High School, if you're looking at our monitor and you see that picture. That picture, the sign in the background is the sign for the high school. All right, the high school and middle school are right there on up to the west if you're yes. on Route 50. They are going to make a major safety improvement up there at, at Vinton County High School. They are going to add a sidewalk. They're going to extend a current sidewalk past that uh, little turnoff there to the oh, left. Okay. See where the cone is? Yeah. They're going to have a sidewalk out there that will allow students, staff, the public to continue to walk on a sidewalk towards the school. It, there is no sidewalk right now. That's good. Also, they're going to uh, establish, uh, and this is a major need, I think, a crosswalk right there. Okay. Because State Route or U.S. Route 50 is pretty busy. On the other side of U.S. 50, you can't see it in that photo are some businesses. McDonald's is there. Yes. RNC Quick Stop is there. And so you have a lot of pedestrians that are crossing back and forth, maybe for lunch or convenience or whatever. Right. They're not necessarily in a vehicle. And so a crosswalk is coming, an extension of the sidewalk is coming up there at Vinton County. And uh, they're by the high school. They're in that busy section of MacArthur where there's been some development. Of course, Campbell's Market is right near there. Uh, they're going to... Uh, perhaps build uh, a new Rio Grande uh, branch of, through the University of Rio Grande there as well. 
Uh, there's a new hardware store there, not, not too far away. So a lot of building going on there, a lot more activity. And so the sidewalk and crosswalk should be uh, pretty important. Okay, elsewhere in Vinton County, we'll go back to Hamden now. Uh, there's a place called uh, the Gas and Oil Station in Hamden. That sounds yes. generic, but that was the name on the building. <laughs> Gas and Oil. Gas and Oil. I think we and have a right picture. There, there the we name. go. Hamden Gas and Oil. There it is. I know you've seen that building. Well, if you didn't know any better, you're not a local. There's been no business actually operating in there for some time. Oh, okay. And it's it's a it's a nice, it's still you know, it's pretty solid building, even though it's old. I'm sure it needs some work. They are going to. This is very important when you have a site that used to be a gas station. They have, they have applied, the Vinton County Commissioners have applied for what they call brownfield remediation funding. That is where the high EPA will come in, do an environmental violation uh, or evaluation rather, and see what needs to be done to clean up or remediate that site so it can be used for something else. Oh, okay. It may involve, I, I think this was not reported, it may involve, you know, uh, later on subsequently the demolition of the building so something else can go there or maybe the building can be saved but any time that you had a gas station and particularly because of underground tanks it sure. needs to be evaluated on what has to be done and you have to do something about the underground tanks uh, if you're going to use that yes. property and it's one step at a time you can't do the redeve redevelopment you can't get people probably interested in buying the property and doing something with it until you've done this but right. this is a very important first step and that will be uh, one of the things that we'll be reporting on, hopefully, cool. in our Wednesday paper. Red Thompson Jr. all over that story. Uh, also, uh, this story is coming soon, too, probably later in the week. But uh, Red was uh, out in force at, in Hamden for the annual Lincoln Day dinner of the Vinton County Republican Party. Uh, that was held on uh, Saturday evening. Uh, Mark Johnson, who is the new state representative representing Vinton County because they changed the districts around. Yes. He's not actually their state representative now, but he will be at the start of next year yes. because I believe he's unopposed in the election. Okay. So he was there, uh, you know, to get acquainted with some of the Vinton County Republican office holders, leaders, and um, rank and file people. All right. In Colton, uh, some news to come out of Colton. Uh, you know, we've talked so much about the sacrifices uh, by firefighters. Yes. Everybody, almost everybody in Jackson County is a volunteer. You know, there is uh, some nominal pay for some of the volunteers, and there are some full-time positions only at the Wellston Fire Department, but mostly the people that go out and fight fires, put their lives on the line, they are volunteers. All right, one of those volunteers at Colton, the current fire chief, Chris Brown, will be retiring at the end of the year. Okay. I'm sure you know, we'll hear more about that as we approach the end of the year, but uh, for personal reasons, uh, health reasons, uh, because, uh, you know, he lives on a farm, a family farm that needs work because he works out of town now. He used to work locally. He has decided to retire officially at the end of the year. Okay. Uh, I've worked with Chris uh, for a number of years since I've been in the media, both radio, on the radio and television and newspaper sides. And uh, he's just a good guy to work with, a straight shooter. Yeah. Uh, always is good to respond to you, even though he's busy, or he'll call you back just as soon as he can. He is stepping down. And Johnny Baker, who has been on the fire department for some time as the assistant chief, he has been appointed by Colton Mayor Kim Willigan. And I think he's a consensus pick among the firefighters, too, sure. to be the new chief starting day one of 2023. So congratulations. And our gratitude goes out to Chris Brown and congratulations, of course, to the new fire chief, Johnny Baker. Speaking of Colton, there's going to be new office hours there at the Colton Community Building. This is where governmental stuff happens in Colton. It's on 2nd Street, just to block off uh, the main drag on 93. Uh, Elizabeth Compton uh, is the new uh, utilities clerk. Uh, she will be in there some. There's a fiscal officer, Cindy Kuhn, who will be in there some. Of course, Mayor Milliken uh, lives close by. She's in there a lot. But the official office hours for the village of Colton have changed starting today, Jennifer. Okay. It, they will be open Monday through Thursday, not open on Friday. It will be 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, on Thursday. And I take that back. I read the rest of the sentence. They will be open on Friday, but the hours are different. It's okay. noon to 6. Okay. So they don't open until noon on Friday, but they'll be open just a little later, I'm sure, for the convenience of the public all the way until 6 p.m. Somebody Makes will sense. be there. Remember, we told you that Debbie Canner, 
had been recommended by the Jackson County Republican Party's uh, executive committee to be a new elections board member to replace Kathy Smalley. Yes. That was a tentative thing. The party, local party gets to recommend and appoint, but it has to be approved by the highest secretary of state. I ran into Debbie at the end of last week and she told me she got the go ahead from a highest secretary of state, Frank LaRose. It happened quicker than it usually does. Uh, so she is now a full-fledged member of the elections board or will be once she's sworn in, if that is a necessary formality. Okay. So congratulations yeah. to Debbie Canner. Okay, uh, once again, we're going to kind of stop on the news. Because this really has to do with the news, but it's about us too. It's news about the news. Right, it, it, <laughs> it is. We want to once again make a pitch for our new website. Yes. Um, we've had a website uh, all the way since 2007. We've had uh, a couple different providers where, you know, uh, that, you know, that, have designed and produced our website, and then we work it with the content and all. But we have a new platform now from Hometown Media, and it gives us a new look, gives us some new wrinkles that we can do to present the news as we continue to try to be uh, fresher and prevent and present the news in many different ways, just not the stories, but the photos, the videos, uh, all that stuff. In a, in a more pleasing manner. Yes. And we want to once again remind you that, uh, you know, if you uh, are a print subscriber, the, the digital uh, subscription, which is the website, mm -hmm. is automatic. That comes with that. So. Yes. Right. And you can get just a digital, too. You can do that for a little bit less money. Yep. And so we urge you to call. Uh, we want Take a look at our website. Some of the things are free. Our obituaries are free. Some of the breaking news are free. Some of the things like if there's a flu shot clinic, we know the public needs to know that. We'll share that information. A lot of the stories, though, are behind the paywall. Right. And to see those, you need to be a subscriber. Yes. And it doesn't cost very much at all. Uh, when no. you consider what you have to pay for everything else, I mean, <laughs> um, we want to go go to the, if you're not a subscriber, go to the website, take a look at it. You can see some of the information there. You can see how it looks. And we urge you to give us a try. You can you can you can sign up for just a month on a trial basis. You can you can do a month subscription um, on the digital or print side. Yes. Uh, or you can do you know three months, six months, or whatever. But we'd like you to give us a try. There isn't any place that you're going to go, including Facebook, to get as much true <laughs> local news. You're right. Uh, at your fingertips. That's exactly right. And we right. are working very hard to get as much as we can and to get it out there as quick as we can. And one of the advantages, of course, of the website is you don't have to wait for that paper to hit your front porch or your mailbox. Correct. All right. So speaking also about us, and we'll say more about this later, uh, but I, I, we had Rodney on to talk about the homegrown happy hour. We have not. Shame on us. Okay. Well, I'm sure that that might be something you might want to do. I would say I you're don't right. think he's too shy. I, I I think Porterhouse does is not at a lack well, of he has words. Been, I give that man credit. He has worked very hard the last couple of months trying to develop the homegrown homegrown happy hour is what he calls it. Yes. And it's a musical presentation uh, that's going to start. This Thursday, October 6th, it's yep. going to start at Rowdy's. It's going to be for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m., and it will feature what he calls Roots, Appalachian, and or Americana musical stylings featuring various local artists. And the first one will be Ben Davis Jr. Yes. This Thursday. And so... Is he kind of hosting the whole thing? Ben's the host, not the performer. Ben's yeah. the host. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he sings, too. Would you? I would say that there will be a song or two from our good friend I don't think you can hold him back myself. <laughs> there he is. Isn't he cute? Ben Davis Jr., right. And so and there gonna, there's going to be different performers there, and this will be a chance to really enjoy some music. And I think that the plan is for the performers, you know, whoever's performing for that hour, they will also perform later on at Rowdy's as well. So it's kind of, you know, a, yeah. a, a twofer. you got the home ground happy hour, which is a structured planned program. And then you've got musical performances at Rowdy's and it could also end up at some other venues on down the road as well. That's right. And the good news is if you, if you can't listen to it live or be there in person, um, you can tune in to what well, it'll be on our podcast, James. Yeah, so you can go to the Main Street TV um, link and, and on ninety eight point seven FM, right? 
So we'll have it on our podcast. So if right. you want to listen if, to and, it you later. Know, if Rodney comes over to share a little bit, there may be some updated information that, he'll, yeah. that he has. But I know that he has been working on it, and it sounds like a great thing. Yes, It love sounds it. like it would be wonderful because um, I never was able to sing or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> You sing Oklahoma like a well, champ. Well, I, I won't say that I, 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 I don't do it well. I, okay. I, I don't he, will, he only sings Oklahoma, and that's it. I tell you for what. For an hour. I, I tell you what. For, <laughs> for a brisket sandwich at Rowdy's, I'll do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll we'll make a call. See if we can hook that up. Oh, okay. Uh, that wasn't for the record. Did I say that on? You said television? that on. I um, mean, I think the food might be. I think there might be food involved. There might. That would be an inducement. All right. <laughs> they know my soft spot. Okay. But anyway, that's the homegrown happy hour website. Yes, you know, look forward uh, to it. Yeah. These. This is worth checking out, uh, either in person or on the airwaves. Yes. All right. Did you know that this was National 4-H Week? Well, our um, guests on Friday kind of mentioned something about that. Okay. So you can Do you think it's up. an accident that I've got a green shirt on? He you, does have on a green shirt. Do you think shirt. it was just on the top of the stack or at the end of the closet? Yes. No, I had to go deep <laughs> into the closet. No, to get my green shirt. <laughs> well, because I'm proud it is, of you. It is National 4-H Week. Yes. And in our paper on Wednesday, we're going to have a salute to National 4-H Week. And one of the things we're going to have is a in-depth feature on the guest we had here last week, Maddie Almond. Love that. A very interesting young lady. She's who, great. Uh, she may be 22 years old, but she has done a lot of background education and training to be ready she has. for what she's doing yes. as the new 4-H extension educator, whatever it is that they call them now. Uh, she, I think she's going to be great. She's really invested in the area. She's invested in Appalachia. And, uh, you know, if you saw her interview, I think you probably know that. And uh, there's be more even detail in the feature that Jeremiah Shaver has written that we're going to uh, release in conjunction with National 4-H Week in this Wednesday's paper. And did I mention that that was going to be online as well here soon? <laughs> I should have done that. I just did. All right. Okay, Jennifer, are you a flu shot person? I, I was brave and got my flu shot right here on the air. You already did from, it. Our friends from Holzer came in and talked about it. So that was that was this year, right? Yeah. So just you, what so two are, weeks ago, so a week as, ago. As Barney Fife said, are you inoculated? I'm inoculated. Okay. All right. Well, the Jackson County Health Department announced Friday a little bit a short notice, but that's why we're telling you on TV now. Okay. We'll get this out on the website and on the radio very quick as well. Yes. And then follow up in the print edition. They have uh, named a series of flu shot clinics where you can oh, also get good. COVID shots, by the way. Okay. Uh, they'll be there as well. Uh, coming up, and there's going to be tr these traveling clinics that will be closer and more convenient for many people and residents throughout the county. They're going to start tomorrow, Tuesday, October 4th, and there's going to be two of them in Wellston. The first one will be at the Wellston Senior Citizen Center from noon until 2 p.m. Then in the, uh, in the late afternoon and evening from 4.30 p.m. until 6 p.m., Wellston High School. And these are open to the public. You don't have to be a member of the Senior Citizen Center or a senior. Yes. And you don't have to be a student or staff member to go to these clinics. They're open to the public. No, it's just that, a venue. That's just where they're having them. Later in the week, Thursday, they will be at Oak Hill Elementary School from 4 p.m. till 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, October 8th, at the Christ United Methodist Church here in Jackson from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And then uh, on down the line, later in the flu season, on Monday, November 7th, from 10.30 a.m. till 2.30 p.m. at the Jackson <coughs> Library. Here is what they say about the flu shots, because I know there may be some debate on that because of all the debate about COVID shots. Yes. The health department, and they should know, right? I think they would know. They say yes. that everyone six months of age and older is encouraged by the CDC to get a flu shot. Protection from a flu shot can last 12 months. The health department will have the high dose flu shot for older citizens that want it. Uh, most of the people who's coming in, they should be covered by insurance. Yes. One of the few exceptions right now is Aetna. However, nobody will be turned away from getting a flu shot for uh, inability to pay. Oh, okay. All right. Nobody, That's fantastic. Nobody will be turned away. If you're under Medicare or Medicaid, that will cover it as well. Sure. So, um, that's the deal. The cash price, if somehow you have to pay and you can pay, 
and you want the flu shot and you know other places that you go uh, to commercial place you're gonna have to pay for it yes it's only forty dollars that's okay. not a whole lot to be inoc inoculated, inoculated inoculated against Such the a flu. fun word but once again nobody will be turned away appointments are not necessary these are walk-in clinics okay uh, the information on where these flu shot clinics are will be uh, printed in the paper on Wednesday uh, we'll have them on the radio and did I mention that they'll be online as well there you go today today online all right okay just so you know that the health department the jackson county health department by the way jennifer is having extended hours at the health department for uh flu shot and covid shots you can go to the health department they do this every wednesday every tuesday, tuesday. okay that's tomorrow right tomorrow from 1 p.m to 6 p.m and that's going to go through the month of october so that is another opportunity to get a flu shot yep or a covid shot at the health department. This is the month where you need to get it. Yeah. Now bring your insurance card. Um, and because, you know, it is most, most flu shots are covered by insurance sure. and Medicare and Medicaid, but bring your insurance card yes. as proof there. All right. Speaking of the COVID-19, uh, do you remember that the Wellston senior citizens, uh, uh, closed uh, for a couple of weeks due to COVID. Yeah. It is scheduled to reopen today. I have not been told anything uh, uh, that counters what I was told earlier, which means that the Wellston Senior Citizen Center should be back open today for regular operations. That's uh, okay, on South great. New York Avenue. So all the Senior Citizen Centers should be open. In Vinton County, I do know this, I don't know a lot of details, but the health or the Senior Citizen Center has been doing their services but it has been closed. The center's been closed for several months now because of the COVID-19. They had hoped to reopen in November, but now there is an issue and they may not be able to do that. But okay. we're looking into that story as well. Okay. Uh, we wanted to remind you that if you didn't listen to us on Friday, you didn't read the paper, you didn't go to that website, you missed that the Buckeye Fall Furnace uh, Fall Festival, fall festival was, yes. was canceled, yes. not postponed, canceled because of rain and by golly it did rain oh didn't it? boy so uh it will not be rescheduled this year but uh they hope to be back next year and they had a lot of support so i know that they will be yeah, back yeah that was so sad because they had such a good lineup and it was going to be such a fun day and stupid rain it's a great great place to go just for the atmosphere yeah, in, in the fall it would be, it would, it would, it would be super uh, the Jackson County Board of Aging, Jennifer, wants to announce that they're going to have an annual meeting on Wednesday, October 12th. And even though there may not be a lot of public interest in, in you know, routine business, one of the things they're going to do uh, is have an election of officers and discuss long-term goals. So, you know, Senior Citizen Center, the Board of Aging affects a lot of people in this county. You know, yes. if, you know, if you look at the demographics. And so if you're interested in that because you're a senior or because you're concerned about seniors, this meeting is open to the public. They don't always announce that they have these meetings. They are always open to the public, but they wanted to put this out to let people know that they are welcome to come. Okay. And of course, there is a renewal levy on the ballot this year for the yes. Senior Citizens Program. All right. We mentioned about the Harvest for a Heart Dinner, mm -hmm. but uh, we wanted to run a picture too. Have you got that, Dylan? There they are right there. These are some of the ladies, not all of them, who makes that Harvest for a Heart Dinner go. Uh, it was held last Monday evening at the Family Life Center, the Christ United Methodist Church, and in one night, they raised $4,000. I think that is great. That is great. Uh, they had a matchbox raffle. They had a nice catered dinner. But the big thing was they had a live auction with Ed Henderson cajoling the bidders out there. Yes. And uh, they did a good job getting bidders there. That's part of it. You yes. got to get, got to, got to lead them to gotta the top. Got to have the people there. Yeah. Right. But uh, here are some of the members and you can see them in the picture there from the left in the front row, Kendra Strickland, Rhonda Daft, Secretary Kim White and President Shirley Stover in the back. You see Vice President Bobby Stepp and Alice Smith. There were other members who were not in the picture because they were busy working and sure. did not have time to post for a picture. They, those included Treasurer Becky Mayhew, Tina Wolford, Sharon Eubanks, other members not able to attend, Anne Green, Michelle Landrum, Hannah Landrum, and Lisa Tackett. Once again, they are all volunteers as well. $4,000 will be used to support heart and cancer patients in Jackson County That's and their awesome. families. You know, all those expenses that you, that even if you have some insurance coverage that you face well, when you have a, a situation with a, a serious illness. Yep. 
All right, uh, more about this maybe later in the week, but we did want to remind you that the Midnight at Moonville Festival is coming up next Saturday evening and Sunday. It's a two-day deal up at Moonville. Uh, it will be, uh, it will be uh, from uh, 3 p.m. till deep into the night on Saturday and then on Sunday afternoon as well from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And so if you haven't been up there, and you want to see Moonville, this is a great time to go when you'll, there'll be food and entertainment and all kinds yes. of activities. And if you don't care about the Moonville Tunnel, there's a party going on. So there you go. That is just off State Route 278 at Zaleski. All right. Um, a couple of events coming up later on. We're just going to throw out some dates and we may tell yeah. you about it later. The Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce will have its annual pumpkin walk. Uh, that will be at Central oh, Memorial Park. One. Uh, on uh, Saturday, uh, October 15th, uh, in the evening, uh, they will uh, have all those candles lit up at 7.30. They will do uh, prizes for the best decorated pumpkins in several different categories. I needed to mention this now because the Chamber of Commerce will even give you a pumpkin. They will provide a pumpkin for you to decorate. You have to go get one. There you but go. But you have to get it this week in advance. The free pumpkins are donated by the Chamber. They will be available starting this Thursday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. and on Friday from 5 to 6 p.m. at the Festival of Flags stage there by the Village Building. Get there quick, and then you can uh, pick out the best pumpkins. Right, exactly. And uh, they even let the adults participate in this thing. Yeah, that's always a fun All event. All right, and don't forget uh, that the uh, Wellston Halloween Parade and Costume Contest, that goes back a long way, the Wellston oh. Lions Club. That is going to be... On Thursday, October the 27th, the parade will start at 6 p.m. near the Wellston Depot. The band is usually there participating. I don't know that they will be this year, but they have in the past. Okay. And uh, they do uh, prizes as well. I That's think every fun. every kid gets candy or a dollar. I'm not sure. Oh. If they, I know if they're funded, they'll do that again too. But it, it is always a big turnout. Trick or treat, remember, is on Sunday, October the 30th, from 5:30 to 7 p.m. in Jackson County communities. It is coordinated, Jackson, Wellston, Oak Hill, Colton, everybody going 5.30 to 7. Yes. All right. Uh, we also want to mention we've come uh, back to football now. We had the yes. homecoming, but we also had football games that night. That's right. And unfortunately, Jackson and Vinton Counties only went one for four, one win and three losses. Oh, man. Now, now the Jackson Ironmen won uh, with an exclamation point. Like, they defeated really the, one. <laughs> there, there's the scoreboard, thanks to, I'm sure that was James Hamilton, or maybe even Dylan helped with that. But uh, there you see all the scores up there. Uh, Jackson's, actually, their victory was actually over Hillsboro, yeah. 63 to 7. Um, Oak, Hill, Oak Hill lost to Wheelersburg, 56 to 7. Wellston lost to Nelsonville, York, 65 to 6. <clears throat> Excuse me, Warren Local. Uh, defeated Vinton County. A little bit of an upset maybe at Warren Local. That was 20-13. to 13. That was a non-conference game. All those others were league games. Frontier Athletic Conference for Jackson, uh, Southern Ohio Conference Division II for Oak Hill, and Tri-Valley Conference Ohio Division for Wellston. Now, Jackson remains undefeated in the league at 2-0. and They are on a collision course with two other teams that are also undefeated, Washington Courthouse and Circleville. They are very good this year, both of those teams. Jackson is good, too. Something's got to give. Jackson yep. plays Courthouse week nine at home, Oof. and then week 10 has to go to Chillicothe. Week eight, they better not go to sleep on this. they got to go to a very improved Greenfield McLean. Uh -huh. So they need to win that game and see what happens in week nine and 10, put their best foot forward. Yep, don't be skipping over these games. Right, and we do want to say this on Vinton County. Vinton County lost. They had a, a four-game winning streak, and they lost at Warren Local. Uh and it was an unfortunate. It was unfortunate that he lost. The good part of it, if there is a good part, is that it was a non-conference game, so uh -huh. it does not count in the conference standings for the TBC. Gotcha. They are still tied for first place there. However, uh, their quarterback Isaac Mollahan, who has been a tremendous performer, one of the reasons why they they have done so well this year. He had a serious knee injury oh, no. in that game and i think he is probably out for the season oh no so Hate you know that it, it i tell you it's football and it happens and it, it can happen anytime it's a it's a very physical <laughs> it's a very physical sport uh prone to injury and unfortunately the vikings will have to play the old card that you have to in sports next man up yep and, but, right. but once again still positioned at first place in the tvc and we want to 
wish uh, Isaac Mullahan and his family the, the very best. Absolutely. Because that young man was having a tremendous season as their quarterback. Yeah. Uh, he could pass the ball, but he was especially a very dangerous runner. He gained as many yards as many running backs do. So, uh, you know, we wish the best for him because he had worked very, very hard. And we hope the Vikings are able to recover from that blow. Of course, everybody will be in action again next Friday. I believe right. it's all conference games uh, next week. And, of course, all those games are on the radio. Hey, That's speaking right. of the radio and that new website, Jen, do you have, have you logged into your account on the Telegram on your phone yet? Yes. Why don't you bring up that Telegram website on your phone real quick? It won't let me because I'm not um, – I haven't renewed my – you just told me you did. I just asked you if you logged in. I All did. Right, it I'll let show me. It. Okay, so All right. I'll show. I'll show you on here. Bad idea. It <sighs> let me log in one time and then it didn't. Are, are you so you can that see you that article there. Too yes. <laughs> so you see that article there for the Jackson Ironman. Yes. You see what's right there under that photo. Yes. Yeah, so it's got a link. To the game. You can listen to Pete, Dan, and Dan right so, there from the telegramnews.com. The Padids. What she said. Pete, Dan, and Dan is the yep. Padids. I've never heard that one. Yeah. I've, I've dubbed you the Padids. Okay. Uh, but yes, you can click on that link right underneath the thing and uh, listen to the game. Yep. Okay. Do very it. Good. With the Padids. With the right. Padids. The Padids. Okay. And then I <laughs> that's, guess that's a new one. I guess we'll have to. <laughs> You've get been called worse, Jennifer. I'm sure. Yeah, I've in. got to figure out why <sighs> I'm not. It's he's shaking his head at. She me. probably didn't pay her bill. Probably didn't. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Jennifer, I'm never gonna spend all her money on urinals you or make fun of you because uh, there are a number of four letter words in my vocabulary, and one of them is password. Gotcha. And the other is username. Can't get by those things a lot yes, of times. Yes, yes. I, I hear you. And James, um, I wouldn't be running my mouth because I have your phone now. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm going to go stick it in that fleshless urinal. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, that might be a good thing. You drop your phone in the fleshless know, toilet. That's, right. that's another reason yeah. to get one, right? I know. It's not going to get one. You, you know it's happened. Well, it's, it's not going to get waterlogged you anyway. I mean, somebody sitting there looking at their phone and, Ugh. So that was literally a discussion that Jamie and I had yesterday. He goes, yeah, that's even so then guys can just, you know, still have another hand. They don't have to worry about flushing to be on their phone right. while they're at the right. urinal. It's on, it's on that list of 10 <laughs> reasons why I put my hands in a toilet or a urinal, right? <laughs> OK, yeah. we're, we're getting off track. Here. Yes, we are getting off track. But yes, so stop by, see the um, no, check out the new Telegram site. It's awesome. And uh, it looks great. It looks really good. It is. It's it's very nice. We are we are truly excited. It'd be yes. another thing that we can do to uh, uh, expand our reach and improve our product, uh, especially in ways for folks who are digitally inclined. How's that? Yes, like some of us here. Right. Yes. All right. As we're telling on ourselves. So yep. Anything else there, Smart A? No, no. I don't. I don't guess so. Well, just say She's, I'd rather be a smart yeah, A than a dumb A. Yeah, Jen, Jen's using some three-letter words instead of four-letter words, okay. Pete. <laughs> All right. Well, Pete, thank you for spending your morning with us. We always appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, I'll go back to my hole now. Go back to your hole. Hey, at least you have a window in this hole. No, I don't. Well, yeah, he has a window, that, a window with, of a view of Red Thompson. Oh, that's true. <laughs> to the rest of the, You have a... They, they 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 built my they built my office where I have no escape except a concrete wall. <laughs> There's reason for that, Pete. Yeah, we guess. don't want you to leave. I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. He's got a great view of Red and Todd out that's, his window. That's right. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dylan, for pushing all the buttons. We appreciate he did, it. He did a wonderful job over he there. Did. And he, he did. He even added some information about the Arm McClenny. Yes. Right. So told us told us about that. So have a great day, everyone, and we'll be right back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.